What's up guys, how's it going? It's that boy Reggie here and we're back at it again with another reaction video. Today we have top 10 most impactful anime fights of this decade by VinnyTube. Man, you, you guys know VinnyTube is the channel to go to when you're looking for anime content. At least that's what I found. Um, and yeah, like the title, I was sold already by it. I was like, yo, I need to check this out. And you guys can see, I'm wearing my My Hero Academia stuff. Hopefully one of their fights is in there. Um, if I had to guess, I would probably say All Might versus One For All. That's my guess. Hopefully it's in there, but let's check it out. And by this decade, I think it means like the like 2010 to 2020, I think. So yeah, I mean, I'm hyped. Are you guys hyped? Let's check this out. Oh, also, I will link VinnyTube's channel, the link to the to their channel in the description as well as the link to the original video, so you guys can go check it out, show some love, they do some amazing stuff, so yeah, let's check this out. Oh yeah. How's it going anime lovers? Hope you're having an amazing day, and if not, that's <laughs> about to change, because I've got something very special for you. Oh, yeah, this decade coming Naruto to an end, okay. today we'll be looking at some of the best and most impactful anime fights we've witnessed throughout the past 10 years. So get cozy and prepare yourself. Let's go. Boys. We start off with one of the most iconic fights from the Dragon Ball franchise, Goku versus Jiren. Obviously, this list wouldn't be complete without Dragon Ball in it nope. now, would it? Despite what the artsy and selective anime fan may tell you, creating a shonen battle is a form of art. Having said that, Goku vs Jiren is easily one of the flashiest fights in Dragon Ball history. When the For two sure. finally clash, Goku's outmatched big time. Jiren surprises Goku by turning his spirit bomb against him, and just as things look over, Goku miraculously unlocks his most powerful transformation yet, the Ultra Instinct. Surprisingly though, Jiren defeats Goku effortlessly, and thankfully the rematch isn't that far away. After all, it's the fate of the universe kind of shit that we're talking about that's on the line, so Goku finally masters Ultra Instinct. Overall, this fight made me feel like a kid again. I got flashbacks of when I saw Goku vs Frieza for the first time in DBZ. This has to be one of the coolest, memorable and inspiring fights in all of Dragon Ball that won't be forgotten anytime soon. Yeah man, I mean how can you not include something from Dragon Ball? Dude, Jiren vs Goku was absolutely insane. I remember when, I, when they first started fighting and Goku had no chance, like absolutely no chance. I was like, yo, what? How is this even going to happen? How are they going to take him down? And then also I, I began to think, yo, why doesn't Jiren just knock everyone out right there in an instant? Come on now. I mean, it, it seems like he has the power to it. Why not just do it in an instant? But it gave us one of the best fights in the decade. So, I mean, I'm not even mad, I guess. <laughs> Jojo's. I've never seen Jojo. Next, it's Jotaro versus Dio from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. As for this being Jojo's number one fight, hardcore fans might put this on their own list of best fights in anime because it's a pure mix of brain, brawn and balls to the walls. After emerging from the shadows, Dio's back, but this time with his OP stand ability, The World, which can freeze time minimally, but enough to do some maximum damage. The fight goes all around the streets of Cairo, causing mayhem. They push each other to the brink and it eventually comes down to wits. In one instance, when Jotaro's knocked down from a knife attack, he purposely stops his heart from beating just to play possum and throws a devastating sucker punch before Dio can freeze time. Just when you think it's all over though, Dio finds a way to come back. Eventually, he lets himself get knocked around back to Joseph's body to absorb his blood to go full power. But that's not enough to stop my boy Jotaro as he angrily shatters Dio's body to pieces by stopping his roundhouse kick with a devastating overhand right swing. Yo, I've never seen JoJo's, but I mean, there's so many memes out there. You know, I mean, and I've seen the memes, so I don't know if you guys have seen my other videos, but like, I have some um, shirts. I know I have like the It Was Me Dio shirt. I also have like the Oh My God shirt. Um, yeah, like the memes are legendary. I'm pretty sure the anime is too. I'll get to watching it someday. But yeah, this looks amazing.
Yeah, this looks like One Piece. I'm kind of on the fence here because like I haven't. I'm watching it right now, so I don't know if I want to watch this. Should I watch it? Should I skip it? Should I watch it? It. Whatever. It's too late. I'm watching it. At eight, we have arguably the best fight from One Piece yet: Luffy versus Katakuri. Now, I know a lot of people had some doubts around One Piece following its time skip, but there's no arguing what? the awesomeness in the fight between Luffy and the sweet commander what? Katakuri. This is definitely one of the major highlights of the series as a whole and a major upset for the latter half of the series. As Luffy tries to rescue Sanji from Whole Cake Island, he comes face to face with someone he deems his greatest test for advancing as a pirate. Charlotte Katakuri, whose abilities are similar to Luffy's, but more powerful in every regard. During the fight, they begin respecting each other and develop as people and fighters. It's an amazing fight in the manga, and the great animation in the anime is definitely worth any fan going out of their way to see, just like all the others on this list. No comment. Looks awesome, though. At number 5 we have Ichigo versus Ulkiora. Ichigo's long running rivalry with the emotionless Ulkiora finally comes to an end in dramatic, over the top fashion, just the way we like it. Ulkiora has proven to be one of Ichigo's toughest opponents. The audience was put in real suspense when Ulkiora landed a successful Zero Oscuras on Ichigo, but Ulkiora had no idea he'd just signed his own death sentence with the attack by helping Ichigo take on his newest powerful and terrifying hollow form. This is the moment when the two swap places, with Ichigo's new form revealing his deep demonic nature and Ulkiora's first experience with fear proving that he's just as flawed as the humans he looks on from above. The fight is epic, seeing how faster and unpredictable Ichigo is compared to Ulkiora when he's transformed, making it a living hell for him. Man, have you guys seen Bleach or, or this fight at least? Well, I guess, whatever. But yeah, like that was probably one of my favorite fights. Um, Okura is one of my favorite characters. And I think, this is just me, I think he he might have been the strongest Aronkar or Espada in, in that arc. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was. I know he's like number four, but I'm pretty sure he was the strongest man. Because he had like two two stages to his transformation that was epic man and then for Ichigo to like go full on I think they called it the Vastalord Vastalord day Vastalord form man that was insane and how he just was so savage he didn't even care he was like man it was insane that was yeah yeah definitely that deserves to be here yo but who else is hype for Bleach Bleach come back let's go Oh, I think I've seen this in another video. The next fight's from a series known for its amazing fights. Yes, it's Kiritsugu vs. Kirei from Fate Zero. Most people think major climatic anime fights must have over-the-top crazy action full of destructive attacks, big speeches and loads of screaming, leaving little room for originality. It's rare that the fight only contains two total hits and no dialogue, but still mm. remains compelling and interesting. This one achieves just that. Two of the most important characters in the Fate series, Kirei and Kiritsugu, battle it out as foils, two people cut from the same cloth pragmatic monsters who are beyond right or wrong in their personal crusades. Now, fluid fight choreography and brilliant strategizing highlight the rather short confrontation between two people who are essentially the same, which you can see in their exchanges. Despite being this badass mage killer who doesn't give a damn about fighting clean and honorably, Kiritsugu finds his match in the priest who acts as a wall that he can't overcome. But overall, the fight's amazing, and personally, this is my favorite fight from the Fate franchise. Yeah, that looks freaking awesome. What? Of course. Cool. 
Next on the list, it's Naruto versus Sasuke. Of course, this list wouldn't be complete without the fans' favorite frenemies, Naruto and Sasuke. These two have been close friends, rivals, and to some extent, enemies as well. Their fight starts in the final valley, where they exchange their ideas and beliefs about the world. Sasuke wants to start a revolution by killing five Kages in charge of the five hidden villages. Naruto, of course, disagrees and tells him he's taking the wrong path. Seeing two close friends fight with everything they have, throwing their most powerful jutsus at one another was heart crushing, but we knew it was only a matter of time before this happened anyway. This fight was amazingly well choreographed and those flashbacks really made us all emotional. In the end, Sasuke's Chidori and Naruto's Rasengan collided, resulting in a big explosion, causing both of them to lose a hand. Lying down on the ground, Sasuke admits defeat. Even after all of Sasuke's shit, Naruto still wasn't willing to give up on him. That's what real friends do, and thankfully, Sasuke acknowledged that. Yeah, man, that was probably one of my favorite fights ever. Not just from the decade, ever. That was so good. Like, the animation, like he said, the animation, just the choreograph, the choreography. Yeah, that was insane. Like, the last part, too, when they both lost the hand, that was cool. For those who haven't seen Gintama, you're probably surprised to see this fight so high on the list. But for me personally, this is one of my favorite fights Man, in but... all of anime. So if this is number two, that means my hero didn't make it. Oh, that's so sad. Oh well. I'm not even mad. But yeah, let's just keep going. That's right, peeps. Gintama's a lot more than just a comedy anime. This fight's raw and bloody. Just what you'd expect from a great samurai versus samurai fight. We finally get Takasugi's point of view, who's not though. so different from Gintoki I after all, they use, but like, just a victim of tragic circumstance. Animes. As shown in their backstory, they've actually almost fought each other 500 times. They head towards each other screaming, leaving aside tactic or strategy. They know each other inside out, their fighting styles, weaknesses, what they're capable of. Both have been waiting for this moment for years, and when they finally meet, they're left with nothing else to do but unleashing the rage they've been honing in all these years. They're evenly matched. Every kick and punch thrown is immediately returned to the other. When Takasugi stabs Gintoki, then Gintoki stabs Takasugi, Ooh. it's something like a mirrored PvP match where you fight your twin brother or something like that. That looks freaking awesome. Like a fight. And at number one, we have without a doubt one of the best fights in the Hunter Hunter anime and anime in general. It's Netero versus Meruem. A fight that's even hyped more by the epic soundtrack and the awesome narrator delivering an epic showdown between Nathero and the Chimera and King Meruem. Leaving aside the incredibly crisp and amazing animation in the fight itself, more importantly, this is about the ideological conflict and what it means to be a human. Meruem's probably my favorite anime villain of all time. He's a complex character that initially starts as your typical cruel and violent dictator that considers himself superior to all other forms of life. He felt no concern for his dying mother after his birth and he only shows respect towards the strong and has no empathy towards humans viewing them as nothing but a source of food. Later on however after meeting Komugi Meruem started to question the differences between ants and mankind and battled with his identity as half human and half insect questioning the nature of violence and strength as true power. On the opposite corner stands Nathero fighting to save humanity from extinction that and, well, because he really just likes a good old fight, Nathero dedicated his life to martial arts. Similarly to the king, he displayed a great deal of pride when it comes to his own abilities. His goal in life is to find a worthy adversary that he can fight with his whole spirit. They both admire and acknowledge each other as worthy opponents, though it looks like the fight could go either way with no clear indication who's ultimately going to win. Soon enough, we see that the king sees holes in Nathero's patterns, taking advantage of them to get through the hands of his stand. I mean, Bodhisattva. Nadero's mistake initially costs him his right leg, but the old man continues to fight, brushing it off like no big deal, calling it 
just a lucky punch. After that, if this old man isn't the biggest badass in the show, then I don't know who is. The King's physical superiority against Nadero's superior will is like a battle between an unstoppable force and an immovable object. In the end, it seems that the King got the best of him, and just as we think this at the end, Nadero reveals that he had a final trick up his sleeve. The miniature rose, his final trump card that he uses symbolically, unleashing his deeply buried menace within his heart to nuke the whole goddamn field along with Meruem. So, which is your favorite? Man, how could I forget about that? That fight was so insane. It was really impactful, like the meaning, like the the ideologies, you know? It was just insane how Meruem was supposed to be the villain here, yet he was more human than Nero at that moment. You know? Does that make sense? It was just like the roles had flipped and Nero now, who was the human, was more of like a monster. And Merum was more of like the human. And you're just kind of like you find you find yourself in this moment where you're like, man. I'm kind of rooting for Merum. Like I really want him to live and to find Kamugi and like be happy, but at the same time. I kind of see Netero's point. I don't know, man. It was just, it was just awesome. It was. If you haven't watched Hunter Hunter, you definitely should. One of the best animes ever, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, man. Tell me which one of these was your favorite. Let me know. I think mine, out of these, I think I have to give it to Mero and, and Netero. I really do. The music. The animation, the, you know, what they were fighting for, I mean, just everything was amazing. But yeah, let me know which one was your favorite, and if it wasn't here, let me know which one it is. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell so you guys can get my notifications. This was Dabboy Reggie, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.